welcome back to my channel guys welcome back to tj just talk i am tj your host of this channel and i want to say today's video is really special the channel has finally hit 200 subscribers and i wanted to do a special video for today so today's video is actually a question and answer video and I want to thank all my committed subscribers who always come back and watch my video. Thank you so much. I could not have reached this milestone without you guys. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. But before we get into the questions, make sure to hit that subscribe button, like and comment and hit the notification bell. If you want to be notified every time this channel drops a video that actually helps the channel and I would appreciate it so so much so subscribe and i'll see you shortly yay <laughs> so let's get right into it all the questions that i have came from you guys all my subscribers every single one was from one of you guys so hopefully i answer it you learn something today you get encouraged um you get edified and i can be a good godly example to you guys to showcasing and answering these questions so without further ado the first question is why did you start your youtube channel why did i start my youtube channel so this year um is a year that i felt like god wanted me to go deeper deeper into knowing who he was um so about four months ago or five months ago i felt that god wanted me to go on youtube and start a channel and teach that's all i felt and it was it was it was a draw i felt from the holy spirit to actually do that um just to share testimonies of god's goodness and different parts of my life of the things that god has done in my 20 years walking with him so i finally took the leap and started my youtube channel of jesus christ i want people to know what god has done in my life and the things that i've learned for new christians the mistakes that i made um and just to help someone out there who is seeking to know different aspects of who god is so yeah i felt god led me to start my youtube channel so that's why i started our second question says how has your view of Christians changed now since you've become born again? Um, drastically, um, my mind has changed. I'm now one of what I hated before. So obviously, I, I love the brethren. I love the body of Christ. Um, we're not perfect. We're all in our walk and we're all growing. Christ. I love Christians. I love to edify. I love to encourage and I love to be encouraged by them. So my view has completely changed. Um, my view is that way because I didn't know God. I didn't know love. And if you don't know, know God, how can you love people? You know, sinners don't truly know how to love because they don't know God. The world does not know God. So now that I've come to know who God is, I love all men because God loves the world that he gave his only begotten son. So he's love himself. So I love believers. I love talking to them. I love fellowshipping with them. I love hearing about all the good things that God has done in their life. And I love seeing them teach and spread the good news of Jesus Christ. So my view has completely changed. For me to say I hate a Christian now would be like I hate God and I hate myself. Because God says, how can you say you love God who you can't see, but hate your brother who you can see? Then you're a liar and the love of God is not in you and so I don't hate Christians I don't hate Christians at all okay our third question says how did Jesus help you overcome the sexual abuse and for those of you who probably are new to the channel um, and you haven't seen that video it will be at the end as well so you can take a look at that um, I was sexually assaulted when I was 19 years old so you can take a look at that as well how did Jesus help me so I've been born again now for 20 years, 20 years. And a lot of stuff when I initially met the Lord was taken from me. 
But the, the only fear I had was I had to tell my husband because my husband was not aware that this had happened to me. Um, and God le- led me to tell my husband. My husband was filled with grace and mercy. Um, my husband held me. He cried with me and he encouraged me and he laid hands on me. And I think God used my husband to help me, to encourage me and show me that I would be loved by a man the right way. So I appreciate him and and I thank God for that. And I think it was during that time of my husband laying hands on me and praying for me, I was delivered. Um, I didn't have any ill feelings after that. There's no fear um, to express um, what had happened in my past life about being sexually assaulted. I'm a new creature in Christ and that happened to an old man. And I have to let that go. I've already forgiven the person who have done that. So if I've had to meet that man, there's no feeling. I would want him to come to know who Jesus Christ is for himself and that the love of God be shed abroad in his heart and he becomes forgiven. I've forgiven him. Um, I held a lot of guilt towards myself as well. And you have to receive from God first to be able to forgive others and forgive yourself. And I've already done that. So God has done a tremendous work in me with that. And if I were to tell you I knew that I would have overcome something like that, I, would, I wouldn't have think so in the past. But now that I've met and experienced the Holy Ghost power, um, I mean, God has just done a tremendous work and I'm truly grateful for that. So yeah, um, God used my husband to help me in that aspect of getting over the trauma of sexual abuse and that was just an amazing experience for me i still remember um the evening when i when i told them so yeah hopefully i answered your question our next question is what are some of your favorite scriptures that have anchored you um the first one is for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life Um, I would say that has anchored me every time because it takes me back to know that God loved me while I was still in my sins. So if I feel like there's thoughts of feeling not loved, I go back to what God did, right? When God made a decision to love me, even while I was just a dirty, good for nothing sinner, rebelling against God, totally doing my own thing, control of my own life. Um, never had any care in the world for God. God loved me and gave Jesus to be the sacrifice for my sin. So that right there just brings my mind back and brings me back to know that God loves me. Because if God can love me while I didn't even care for him, how much more now is the love of God shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Ghost that lives inside of me? So that would be my first one. And I would tell anybody is to know that God, believe that God loves you and God has good intentions towards you. So when I think for the fact that God loves me, I think also that he has good intentions for me. My second one would be Proverbs 3, 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not onto your own understanding. And then the other verse says, and in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. I believe that God is leading me every day. I have faith and believe that anything that I'm doing, I should put total dependency on God. And anything that I'm going to do, I need to acknowledge God first. I need to hear his voice. I need to commune with the Holy Spirit to know what steps I should take. And he will direct me. God will not direct me into any danger. He will direct me into his purpose and his will for my life and the things that I'm called to do. So those are my two go-to scriptures. I quote them all the time. Every day I quote Proverbs 3, 5, because I want to acknowledge that I have a maker, that God Almighty is my creator, and he's God of all the universe. He's the God that made you, and he's the God that made me, and that keeps me anchored to know I can depend, and I have somebody I can trust in and rely on. So yeah, hopefully those two scriptures can become your anchored scriptures as well. Number five is... Describe briefly your intimate time with the Lord. So it's my intimate time with the Lord. Um, The Bible talks about when you want to pray, you want to go like into a closet and you want to spend time with God. And I can say for the last year and a half, I've gotten super closer walking with God, hearing the Holy Spirit, listening to Holy Spirit, making sure I get direction 
you know, hearing those little details of what I need to do or not do because sometimes it's stay still. Like right now, I feel like God is saying, be still. I know that I'm God. Be still and let God work in my life. So yeah, it's, it's, it starts early and I believe we should get up early um, and we should make that sacrifice. If, if Jesus is our Lord and the Lord tells you what to do and you obey, it's to be obedient to what the Lord tells me. So first I get up early. Me and my husband, we get up super early, sometimes 1.30 in the morning and we pray. But it's between 1.30 to around 3, 3.30, we're up and we're praying and we're seeking God's face. Um, so yeah, it's it's... It's worshiping, praising him, and really giving thanks for everything that he's done in my life that's good. The Bible says it is God's will to give thanks to God in everything, not for everything, because everything doesn't come from God. Good things come from God, but God wants us to give him thanks in every situation. There's something to give thanks. It doesn't matter the situation you're in, you can give thanks that you're alive and you're breathing the breath of life to give God thanks. So yeah, I, I just want to give that brief description. I get up early and I have my place where I go and I worship. And I I listen to the Holy Spirit to lead me after I read my devotional or while or before. What, whenever time the Holy Spirit speaks to me, I, my, it goes along with what he wants me to study. Sometimes I get into deep study about a particular subject or just a phrase or whatever I feel as I'm reading that jumps off the page and Holy Spirit says, stop, um, look up this word or meditate on this or go here and, and he will walk me through a whole thing and give me revelation knowledge. So yeah, hopefully that helps and helps you in some way. So the next one is, what was your greatest fear and how did you overcome it? My greatest fear I would say if I were to go back and think and said my greatest fear would be I would think raising my son to make sure that my son grew up and served the Lord I think I don't know about my husband but I think I can speak for him probably was a, a many many years ago but God said if you train up a child in the way they should go when they're old they will not depart from it does my son make mistakes absolutely but my son loves God, and I believe that he trusts the Lord. So I trust God. I, I, I stood on that promise that God is going to lead me and my husband to train my son in the way that he should go. And when he's older, he will make decisions the way God would have him make those decisions. So I think that probably was my greatest fear, is that my if my son grew up and did not serve God. I don't have that fear anymore because I gave him over to God. He's t he's going to be 22 years old this year. And I, I tell you, he encourages us. Um, he's, he's a good example in a lot of areas of his life for me and my husband. I can honestly say that. And a lot of times when we need encouragement or whatever, he would come and he would give a word and he will, he will preach back to us what we have taught him. Like you taught me this and said, I need to trust God in this situation. And he comes back. And he does that for us. So that was um, one of my biggest fears, I would say. I don't have that fear anymore. I trust the Lord completely with the well-being of my son. So hopefully you do the same if you have children. Because loving parents, we love our kids. And we're always thinking about their future. And we always want the best for them. My best for my son is God. That's the best that I can give my son is God, is to show him the ways of the Lord and lead him towards God and God will do the rest. So I trust that God will do what he does because one day I won't be here and if he, my son is here, God will him, God has him and I trust God in that way. So yeah, hopefully I answered your question on that. The next question is, how do you let go and let God? Let go and let God. In this life, we're going to have trouble. We're going to have tribulations. We're going to have tests. And we're going to have trials. The Bible says that. The Christian walk is not without trouble. But God says he will never leave us nor forsake us. And there's so many great promises in the word of God. But let's focus on what I do. When I come across any situation just like everybody else the emotions are there it comes with the emotion you hear a word whatever it could be you hear a word and it, the emotions strive to flood in 
And what I do is I call out to God. The word of God where immediately when trouble come, I think of God. My mind just thinks of God and I think of, I need to trust God and I'll pray. I'll worship. If I feel the spirit of heaviness, I worship because, um, worship and praise lifts the spirit of heaviness. It lifts it. And I, I'll worship. I'll cry. If you need to cry, cry. I cry. There are times I have to cry because the pressure is so heavy. I'll cry, but I cry out to God. The Bible says you need to come boldly as a believer to the throne room of grace, right? So you can get help in time of need. Boldly mean you go and you tell God everything. Whatever the problem, whatever the situation, you tell him everything. That is what we're supposed to do. And the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit speak to us. Holy Spirit will speak to us and give us direction, will encourage us, will correct us, will lead us and tell us what the next step is. We just have to make sure we reach out to God, depend on God for everything. So that's how I let go. I take all my cares, I take all my anxiety, no matter what the problem, and I just go and I pretty much dump it on God. He said, cast your cares on me. So when you cast something, it's like you're throwing it, like you're throwing it over. So I just go and I just throw it on God. I say, God, here is everything that I'm facing. Here, here's everything that I'm feeling. It's not that God doesn't know, but God wants that communion. God wants that knowing between you and him. So that's what I do. I bring it to God. I cry. I sit on the floor in the morning when I'm worshiping or whatever time. I'll cry. I'll put my head down and I'm, I'm, I'll cry in the shower, but I reach out to God because sometimes you feel pressure and you, you have to cry. You have to let it out. It's okay to cry. So that's what I do. I get my scriptures. I get in the word and I worship and I give it to God and I leave it there. And once I, I do that, the devil will come, demons will come and they'll try to give you thoughts. I just cast it down with a word. I cast, I said, I've cast it on the Lord and I've left it there and I leave it in God's hand. And guess what? God works it out. God does what he does best. He works it out and it always works in our favor. No matter what the situation, God makes sure everything works and there's good at the end. So that's how I let go and let God. So hopefully you're doing that. If not, try it and see. But yeah, you give it to God. God made me. God's, God's the maker of everything. He's the maker and creator of the universe. So of course, I'm just going to throw everything on him because that's what he says. Come boldly to the throne room and seek grace. And that's what I do. So hopefully I answered your the question. next question is, how do you and your husband balance cooking and working? Okay, so it depends on different times of our life because... There was a point where me and my husband we were working together. He worked at night and I worked during the day. Um, so he had to sleep during the day, right? And I would sleep during the night. And it was both of us cooking. Because my husband would sleep part of the day. And if he gets up, right, while I'm at work and he gets up early, he, was, he would cook. Um, and then I'd have dinner when I come home. And then he'll rest and he leaves for work around 9.30 at night. And he goes. And if he's, if I come, if I come home and he woke up to come get me and he forgot to cook, then what will happen is I may cook or we may get something along the way because we want to make sure he gets back into bed to rest so he can have that time before 930. So ma'am, my husband is really, really good with a lot of things. I, I, I love the man that I marry. He's so gracious to me, so compassionate. Then there was a phase in our lives where I worked and my husband was home. That was many years and what happened was my husband cooked for me. I never had to come home and cook at all and that was amazing. My husband learned to cook. He actually learned to really cook some chicken and you know some re potato some real cooked food vegetables and all that good stuff and it was such a blessing and we actually ended up saving a ton of money during that time um and he cooked for me all these years and he cooks for me now we're both home now and my husband if i wake up and i say baby i don't want to cook my husband just cooks you know i will i will wake up and he'll say Babe, you want me to cook? What do you want me to cook? He'll just ask me. And I think that's amazing. And then I may get up one day and say, Babe, I'm a cook. What do you want to cook? So there's no real, it's my task, your task when it comes to cooking. Depending what the situation is, we just automatically adjust ourselves 
to accommodate and love on the other person. That's pretty much how we've always done cooking. So it's never been a pressure that I have to cook every day. If I cook every day, my family loves it because there was a time where I just felt like I wanted to cook every day. They love it and they appreciate it. When my husband cooks, I love it and I appreciate him because I love him. And I think it's a way he's showing love to me and it's a way I'm showing love to him. So yeah, hopefully I answer your question. So you just have to sit down and have that conversation and agree on what works best in your marriage. It's your marriage. Your marriage is going to be whatever you make it. Each individual has to commit that they're going to love on the other person. You're going to deny yourself some things to love on the other person and agree in doing it. You know, and that's what we've been doing for 18 years and hope God willing, October comes will be 19 years of marriage. So yeah, we just, we love on each other and hopefully I answered your question. Okay guys. Just want to wrap up and say thank you guys for the 200 subscribers again. Super appreciate you. I want to be on my way to 500. That's when I want to do my next Q&A at 500 subscribers. Um, thank you guys so much. And make sure don't forget to subscribe, like, hit the notification bell, right? And subscribe to the channel if you're new here thank you so much for joining me and i appreciate you and guys see you in the next one and remember jesus is lord and jesus loves you bye bye